Hey guys and welcome to my channel. So while the GPU market is slowly healing, the upcoming Intel GPUs are rumored to be fairly overpriced and with the Nvidia 40 series cards still in the horizon, not to mention that they are expected to use huge amounts of power, many PC gamers are still playing the waiting game and trying to survive on their older GPUs. Well, I'm sort of one of those people, and while the 1080 Ti is still a beast in its own right, my card is yanked out of an old HP pre-built, and its blower-style cooler isn't only bad enough to make the card thermal throttle, but is also louder than a banshee giving birth. So, how can I rectify this problem, and how much performance is actually left on the table? Uh, that's what I wanted to find out, so I bought a barely used 240mm AIO for about 60 euros and an NZXT G12 Kraken bracket for around 20. So all in all, the setup ended up costing less than a GPU block for custom water cooling. So not bad. The card itself, while being branded HP, is based on the standard Founders Edition PCB. So if you are doing this yourself, please check your card before you wreck your card and make sure the solution fits. Most likely there will be no issues, but it never hurts to double check and if you aren't a tech savvy type, you can always contact NZXT support. We're gonna have to remove the original cooler, so we start by removing the screws from the back. Again, this might differ between cards, but you can most likely find a disassembly video of your card on YouTube if you need one. Now that I've removed most of the screws off the back, I double checked that there's no screws on the sides that need removing. Except for the one in the back that attaches the cooler to the back plate. The screw in the back is a bit tighter because of the blue Loctite. Next I'll remove the last few screws from the back and then we should be ready to remove the cooler. The cooler itself should come off pretty easily by rocking it gently, but as you can see there's still something in the back of the card keeping it together. If it doesn't want to come off, don't use force. Let's just give the other end a wiggle so the thermal paste and pads give in. Now, the last screw is probably this one in the corner, but since it's holding the backplate to the PCB, we want to keep it there if possible. Let's try and remove the smaller screw on the side first and see if that's enough. No luck, so let's remove this one. Now it comes off easily, and it's just a matter of unplugging the fan and the LED, and it's off. Okay. 
As you can see the headers are really tight and might take some gentle persuasion to get them off. But just be patient. Finally, I'm gonna get a cotton swab and clean the rest of the dust off, but to save your time I'll just do it off camera. Next, let's clean the old thermal paste. I just use ordinary coffee filters to wipe it off, since they don't leave any lint behind. Some people use isopropyl alcohol here, but in most cases it's unnecessary, especially if it's the stock paste since it's completely dry and just flakes off. At this point let's look at the NZXT G12. It's a simple bracket with an acetextile pump attachment and a 92mm fan that I installed already, since it's just for ordinary fan screws. The only thing you have to pay attention to is that the fan blows towards the PCB so that the VRM stays cool. Some people install separate heatsinks on the VRM chips, but they aren't really necessary, and for the sake of simplicity we don't want to do that. Also, if you want to power the fan and or the pump of the GPU fan header, you will need a separate adapter for it. The included fan is also 3-pin, so you can PWM control it. I don't find it too loud, but if this is important to you, then you might want to grab a different fan. Next, we'll install the brackets. This is just a matter of sliding washer on a screw, pushing it through the corner holes around the GPU die, and fastening them in the holes on the bracket. You don't want to tighten them too much at first, so just use fingers and tighten them afterwards with a screwdriver. The G12 comes with two sets of brackets, one for AMD and one for NVIDIA GPUs. They are clearly marked with an A or an N, so you can't really mix them up. Now, don't over tighten the screw so you don't damage the PCB. Just turn the screwdriver with your fingers and you're good to go. Next, we'll need to install the supporting foam pads on the bracket. Just measure the bracket on the GPU and find two empty areas. Remove the covering from the tape on the pads and place the pads in the correct place with the sticky side up. Then we'll just align the bracket on the GPU correctly, so the pads stick to it.
Do the necessary realignment on the pads and don't worry too much. The pads are firm but they do give in a little, so the placement doesn't need to be 100% accurate. My bracket is a bit wonky, but not enough to cause any problems. Next we need to prep the AIO on the bracket. The AIO comes usually with pre-installed bracket, so we need to remove that one first. It comes off just by turning it counterclockwise. Then we take the G12 and install the pump on it. To do this, we just slide the pump in place from the same side as the fan and turn it clockwise to lock it in. The manual suggests you zip tie the tubes between the fan and the bracket, but this isn't ideal for me, so I'll just keep it. Now we have everything ready and we can get into installing this bad boy on the GPU itself. I'm using the Echotherm paste from EK Waterblocks. It's cheap and performs identically with Arctic MX4, so it's going to keep your GPU cool without breaking the bank. I don't have a tool for spreading the paste, so I just rip a piece of the package. Anything stiff enough with a straight edge works. Now, I don't want to drown the dye in paste, so I just add a little uh, to see how well it spreads, and then add more later if needed. You want to make sure to cover the whole die, because unlike GPU heat spreaders, the GPU die heats up across the whole surface, and any area without paste could cause issues in the long run. Next, we place the bracket on the GPU. You might want to align the foam pads in the right place first and then place the pump side on the die. Then we just place a washer on the screws and put them in place without fastening them all the way. Thank you. 
when every screw is in place, just tighten them across so that the pump sets evenly on the die. Then we're done and can start testing how well the GPU performs. I will upload a separate video about that to get a full disclosure without turning this into an hour long video. So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like or subscribe and I will most likely upload the results video at the same time as this one. So you can find that on my channel as well. See you next time.